Good morning. My name is Scott Redler, Chief Strategic Officer at T3Live.com. And I'm Brittany Umar, and together we bring you Morning Call Express. Now, our futures point to a positive open this morning, lifted by a strong session. In Asia, we have China's Shanghai Composite at multi-month highs, and Japan, after winning the bid for the Olympics, also saw the Nikkei lifted. So how constructive do you think this is for equities markets? Well, it's good to see the world markets rallying, and China, which has been pretty much a pressure point throughout most of the year, changed over the summer. And we mentioned that once or twice. And you could see that when you watch certain sectors and certain charts as they unfold. And if you remember, you look at the chart of the FXI, which is a vehicle that some use to invest in the Chinese markets. You look here, you'll see that June, July is when it put in its double bottom. Okay, from there, you had a gap up. And we talk about how gaps could indicate moves in that direction. And then, you know, it held the gap. And if you remember, in August, our markets had our biggest move of the year to the downside, down 4%. Shanghai composite held firm, so did the FXI. So from here, you had a low, a higher low, and now here we are pushing out, you know, above a downtrend into multi-month highs. So there are ways to see this. There are ways to see a trend change. And now it's hard to chase the Shanghai up here, but overall, you know, the dips in this arena, I think, are viable. And we talked about Japan, which is a lot different. Japan was actually in an uptrend, just a very, you know, <laughs> a very heated one before this outside day pulled in, you had a little reversal here, and now you have this pennant forming. You know, it did break below it, you know, quickly over August, but bounced right back in it. And now I think that this also could be getting, you know, set back in motion for a move back to the highs. That I don't know if it'll be taken on 2013, but I don't see why it can't happen in 2014. Well, let's parlay that into a look then at the S&P, because after a volatile session on Friday, how should we be approaching today? Well, I think guys like myself on an intermediate time frame are trying to figure out 1627 in the SPX, is that the fall lows? Is that the, you know, the August, September lows where now we could, you know, put on a portfolio approach, keep it on, not worry? And I don't know if that's exactly the case, especially, you know, look at the wild ride we had on Friday. You look at the chart of the SPX, you will see, you know, we're still, you know, in this trend since the November, you know, the November lows here. We tested it here. It was hovering, hovering here. And we've bounced off it. It's not really that decisive. So I would say you take a closer look here and, you know, maybe we'll measure it step by step still. Here is your 50 day. Here is this somewhat of a, like a downtrend. Remember this the descending trend line we talked about. We really have to get above this 1670 with some force in order to get some short covering. You know, so at this particular point, this is, you know, the area to trade against. You know, it got a little scary on Friday before regrouping. So just, I would say stick with this trend until it changes. I wouldn't be overly involved. I think within the next week or two, we'll know a lot more there. And meanwhile, there were uh, stocks that showed relative strength last week, namely social media stocks like Facebook at 2013 highs yet again. And that's why we love corrective phases, because during August, Facebook did not go to its 100-day like the markets. It had trouble even getting to the 21-day. So it showed us the relative strength there. And if you look at Facebook, this was your earnings gap, which held, and then the continuation all the way to the highs here. Lots of tradable inflection points along the way. Even LinkedIn, something that obviously has been moving to the upside well before Facebook, gave you a nice opportunity here on that secondary pricing. Came in, held the 21 day, which it's been doing for the majority of the, since June. So if you saw the strength there, nice little trade. And then even some guys have been talking about Yelp. Okay, another social media stock, another stock that during the August correction did not move lower. So it gave you a nice three day breakout. So ultimately, even in a corrective phase, lots to do in social media. And this week, of course, we do have the big Apple events on September 10th and 11th. The chart has been looking good. So how much is, will this be a focus of yours this week? Well, it's always tricky when you get to the event because sometimes it's not as exciting as people think, but right. it's, well, at least we have two. So mm -hmm. if they try and sell September 10th, then they have to worry about the event in China. So maybe right. it keeps a sustained bid. Overall, stock's been acting very well since its previous earnings. It's been very tradable, especially after it took its 200 day back and now it's consolidating again. So this will be a focus of mine over the next few sessions. You look here at the chart, here's it, that lower level. You know, remember the, the gap up after earnings right here? That was right there, three-day move, nice and viable above this downtrend. You know, hit a little bit of, a, a, of an area that you had a controlled pullback, but then it took back the 200-day. And now look at this little pattern here, nice bull flag. It's um, held the majority of this move. So I would say if it could finally get above 502, 503 and stay there, and close above there with some volume, you know, the, you know, the next real obstacle is going to be to get above 513.74 to get to new 
2013 highs. And of course, we'll be talking about all of this and more in the full morning call, so stay with us.